Valery Legasov is portrayed as a hero in HBO's new blockbuster miniseries Chernobyl. It shows the nuclear physicist standing up against the Soviet cover-up, possibly saving a countless number of lives after the 1986 nuclear meltdown. But while Chernobyl has been a hit with both Americans and Russians, the program is not so popular with the Kremlin. Russian officials say Chernobyl is a propaganda hit piece. And a pro-government television network is producing its own show, which partly blames the disaster on the CIA. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined in Moscow by Dmitry Medvedenko. He's a journalist at the Russian news agency TASS. And in Northampton, Massachusetts, is historian Jennifer Eremieva. She wrote the books Have Personality Disorder, Will Rule Russia, and Lenin Lives Next Door. Good to have you both on the program. Uh, Dmitry, I, I watched Chernobyl. I was blown away by how well it was done. It was fantastic. Um, I wonder, was it true to the spirit of the tragedy, to the history, the events, or was it all of that, but also a little bit anti-Russian? What do you think? Um, my, my general perception of the series was that it was, it was brilliant. I mean, there were a few cringeworthy moments, like uh, people drinking vodka at the hotel or the soldiers drinking vodka, given that there was prohibition law enforced at the time. And uh, actually, the accounts of the uh, liquidators or the responders was that they, they did have the vodka, but it was, uh, it was uh, moonshine from far away uh, deserted villages, for example. But otherwise, let's just go back to, to the general impression. I think it was very well done. My first uh, thought uh, when I watched episode one is that why hasn't Russia done its own mm. movie, uh, its own big uh, blockbuster series on, on the topic? Uh, and even though there were a few uh, feature-length movies and countless documentaries, of course, on the topic, the general impression is that HBO has really kind of placed Chernobyl on, on the map now, right. again, 33 years later. And Jennifer, is that what is rubbing some officials up the wrong way to the extent um, to which they, they're actually going at NTV, going to create their own series where they're going to suggest that the CIA ma was maybe involved? Is that at the heart of it that... How come we didn't do it? How come HBO and Sky did it? And it's all these people with, with English accents. We should have been the ones to do this. Well, I applaud NTV for um, making the effort to put together a, a show about Chernobyl. I think it's long overdue. It, HBO is going to be a very hard act to follow. Um, the series was um, a spectacular hit here in the United States and in, in Europe. And my understanding is that it's playing extremely well in Russia as well. I've heard I've heard about places where there are obscure monuments to the Chernobyl liquidators that had never had any interest uh, taken in them before, and now people are going to lay flowers. So uh, I think that it's all to the good to bring uh, ideas like this to the fore. Right. And talking about ideas like this coming to the fore, Dimitri, looking back at the system that was Soviet communism, that comes under the spotlight. Now, whether... This is something that's a parallel with, with all other systems that eventually just uh, survive only to sustain themselves and operate only to sustain themselves, or it was something particular to, to communism. Tell me what it would mean for Russians to watch characters such as the Paul Ritter character, Anatoly Dyatlov, where you have this kind of uh, knucklehead bureaucrat who punches down at, at inferiors and kisses up or kisses ass when it comes to superiors and only exists to perpetuate his own job and, and to survive in a system of lies. So beyond the nuclear tragedy, tell me what, what that sort of character and that kind of culture of lies means for Russians when they watch this show. Oh, he was one of the most horrifying elements of the whole story, I think. I think um, episode one really strikes a chord when it's like a horror movie where you're watching uh, not just a horrible uh, technogenic disaster uh, unfold, but also the way it is dealt uh, with just complete denial from, from uh, Dyatlov when he's just basically saying, no, that's impossible, the reactor couldn't, couldn't explode. And if you actually rewatch um, interviews with him, there's an unknown interview which was posted on YouTube a few years ago with him 
where he, uh, um, it, it was before he died, I think, in 1995. But uh, he still continues to deny any wrongdoing in the whole situation. He says it's uh, still something which was uh, as a result of the technical characteristics of the reactor, and he had basically nothing to do with it. So even though, of course, we understand that in a series you have these characters which are based on on true uh, personalities. Sometimes they're a collective personality, like mm -hmm. Uliana Khamiuk. She represented all of the researchers and scientists who helped Legasov. He wasn't a one-man scientific force dealing with uh, the disaster. Uh, Dyatlov here does, in fact, represent uh, the lack of uh, feeling of responsibility that was uh, true to uh, the way the Soviet system worked where basically in order to achieve greatness, achieve results, you needed to step away from the official safety regulation papers. So right. you needed to improvise and show initiative, which he does, and which leads in eventually to the, to the disaster. But when you are blamed for it, you basically are shown the instruction and that you didn't follow it, and so it creates this kind of logical loop. And he takes zero responsibility. So this is one of the most terrifying elements of the series, in my, in my opinion. But I wanted to go back to, to the whole NTV story. Uh, my, uh, my opinion was, my, my per perception of this whole NTV is also making their own Chernobyl was just exactly as yours and, and Jennifer's, is that, uh, well, you know, it's a little too little too late to, to come into this uh, race because HBO is so far ahead. Mm -hmm. But in, in fact, I looked into it, and it's apparently, it's been five years in the making, this oh, series, and just basically ran out of financing stuff like a year ago. I so it's a, it's a thing that they've been doing for quite some time. I think maybe they were trying to react to the Americans <laughs> when they saw it on America. American TV. Anyway, because oh, that, that was a, yeah, the perception. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, that's fascinating because, you know, there's a CIA character in there. Jennifer, there was one character, Zharkov, who was fictional, right? Now, in, in the first episode, he's fascinating because he's this old Bolshevik um, loyalist who's telling everybody, do it for Mother Russia, do it for Lenin, for the spirit of Lenin at this, at this table. And they all cheer him on. And he says, we're going to seal off the city and nothing to see here. There's no problem. I guess... I'm a bit partial to the idea that this was a bit propagandist because did they need to create this character to say this stuff when everybody had internalized this stuff anyway? Wouldn't it be more realistic to just show people making these catastrophic decisions because they live and breathe the system without the old man forcing them to, to do it? Well, that was a wonderful um, that was a wonderful cameo character, but I think it was important because he makes the point that the um, the reactor factory, the Chernobyl plant, is named after Lenin, um, that the state is preeminent, and that everybody has a duty to the state, and if their duty is to keep quiet, as he says, um, the people should just continue on with their work. Uh, and their work as they see it is to cover up the fact that there's been the worst nuclear reaction, uh, reactor explosion um, in the history of mankind. Yeah, something that might be buried yeah, amid all of this, especially with the controversy. As we look at it, we look at people who are not happy with, with the show, those who consider it propagandist and so on. Dimitri, does it fully show the heroism of the soldiers, the reservists, the volunteers, the miners and all of those who did their very best in order to stem the fallout and to stop the disaster from becoming worse. It's a long shot to say that something represents uh, a huge effort of 600,000 people fully within five episodes, obviously. But I think it was done in a pretty respectful manner. Uh, there were, of course, uh, elements, again, which were added for the kind of the Hollywood touch uh, to, uh, to the whole um, series, as, for example, the miners who were completely in the nude because it was so hot. That mm -hmm. is factually incorrect. Or the minister of um, industry in person coming with two armed guards with Kalashnikovs to the miners to ask them slash order them to go and join the effort. Uh, I thought that this this was this was a bit off, but uh, it was it was it was fiction. This is Hollywood. This is not a documentary. Okay, and good points. And whatever your views on on the politics of this, it is utterly compelling viewing. Really fascinating. And 
Uh, it's, it's almost hard to believe that this happened only 30 years ago um, uh, at this catastrophic level. Listen, uh, Dimitri and Jennifer, good to talk to both of you. I thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers.